What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of My Ultimate Team. This is episode number 50 and uh, today guys, as this is a rounded episode as we have reached a bit of a milestone, I decided to do a special episode for this one. Um, unfortunately there was no Elden Nero 90 for this video because Elden Nero and I uh, have been very busy of late and we couldn't really organise the time to do a dual commentary to get, uh, together so there's no Elden Nero for this one. But uh, for this video what I planned to do was uh, have two games and do them both live. And uh, well, I thought I was doing that, and basically I played two games, you'll see the games here. I played these two games and I realized that I wasn't recording my commentary. So I played two games, realized I wasn't recording, answered a load of questions, and then realized I completely messed up. So unfortunately the first two games are just the uh, the goals and the highlights of those two games, and I'm gonna commentate over them naturally. But I did do a live game afterwards, and um, you, uh, you should be able to enjoy that anyway. It was a good live game, the, the third game of these, uh, these three. And um, yeah, we did have these two games as well and as I said I was playing these games and I was doing these commenta this commentary and I was doing the live commentary and I was answering these questions and I was talking and I was just having some fun and then um, as soon as I finished I said thanks for watching and I turned to my right and I realized that the button <laughs> was still red and not orange so I hadn't been commentating which is really frustrating but um, even so um, I decided to uh, use these clips anyway and um, you know why not really and just you know, just commentate over them normally but um, anyway, uh, the first uh, game again was against this BPL side, and unfortunately, I got off to a really, really poor start in this game. I was 2 0 down after 20 minutes there. Suarez got the goal, and he see Cavani uh, get played for here. So it wasn't a BPL side, so it was a bit of a mix. But uh, he see Cavani get played for it. It came to Suarez, and Uruguay made it 3 0. So 22 minutes in, I was off to an absolutely terrible start. Uh, during the commentary, during the live commentary, I was just completely raging as things stood. But a few minutes after that, we had a free kick, which uh, Kabul crossed into the box, and Tony Cruz got us back in the game here to make it 3-1 so 28 minutes in a good chance to make a comeback here but unfortunately straight from uh, that we played the ball forward with Renteria towards the run of Elia. Elia runs clear here good chance to make it 3-2 but unfortunately the goalkeeper makes the save and uh, we couldn't put the ball in the back of the net so it was still 3-1 and unfortunately my, uh, my opponent still had a two goal cushion. He sees Schurler get on the ball for my opponent though. Uh, skips past Bakary Sanya. Nice piece of dribbling by Schurler. Keeps on going. Shoots. Good block. But it falls to Oscar. And his half volley loops over the Reese and finds the back of the net. So 4 1 to my opponent. I was having an absolute mare in this game. I really was. I wasn't really concentrating on the gameplay. I was concentrating on the questions. I was playing really, really badly. But uh, after Oscar made that, I was determined to make sure I would not lose this game. And after a few minutes later, Ben Arthur got a free kick for us. He played it in. And Tony Cruz volleyed it into the back of the net to make it 4 2 here. So back in. In the game and in a 45th minute on the stroke of half time a great ball by uh, sorry, a great ball by Renteria sorry releases Elia who goes through one and one and he smashes the ball past the goalkeeper to make it 4-3 so we were 4-1 down it was now 4-3 good chance for us to get ourselves back on double terms <clears throat> and complete a great comeback. And in the 58th minute, Elliot gets on the ball for us here. Gets past his mouth with a nice piece of turn. Good uh, good pass to Cruz. Cruz finds Moreno. Nice one-two between those two. It's Tony Cruz who goes down the left-hand side here. Crosses the ball in. There's Renteria. And we do indeed complete the comeback. So from 4-1 down, we made it 4-4. And I am absolutely gutted I wasn't recording the commentary because after I got it back from 4-1 uh, got it back from four -one down to make it 4-4, I was just celebrating like crazy. And in the 81st minute, a great chance to make it 5-4. We played the ball through to Elliot. Good chance here, but unfortunately I messed up the finish and my opponent managed to get the ball away after Ben Arthur's shot, uh, pass found Elia and his shot was blocked and the uh, the opponent managed to get the ball away and keep the score at 4-4 here and uh, we just couldn't seem to find that fifth goal and in the 90th minute the last chance fell to us. Uh, in form Moreno got on the ball, nice little bird of spin here. Uh, play, uh, place the ball out wide to Tony Cruz. Cruz shoots from just outside the area. Unfortunately the goalkeeper saves it and the game does indeed finish 4-4 so that was a good game. That was a really, really good game to play in a 4-4 uh, draw. I think that draw was probably Probably a little bit unjustified. I felt like I deserved the win to be honest, but a draw wasn't bad. <clears throat> My opponent played really well on offense, it's just his defense was quite scrappy, but I felt as though I deserved to get the win, but unfortunately we'll take the draw at 4-4, and um, it was a really, really good game to be involved in, and again, I was just absolutely gutted that game, uh, I didn't have the live commentary for that, because it was really, really good fun to be involved in, but uh, straight after that we got into the second game here, and as you see me uh, use the exact same score once again, coming into the second game, we've already sealed promotion to Division 3, so with a win in this game, we could actually secure the title as well, came against this 83 rated 100 chemistry side, Czech, Marcello, David Luiz, Hummels, Pickshack, Gundogan, Diego, Fernandinho, Willian, Blasikovsky, and Lovandowski up top. So very good 4-3-3 side. Nice little hybrid there of the BPL and the Bundesliga. <clears throat> 
and uh, the first chance will come to my opponent straight from kickoff. Fernandinho finds the uh, the rapid Polish right winger. He plays the ball forward towards Diego, and the Brazilian puts the ball past Lloris. So it was one nil to my opponent, literally straight from kickoff. And I was off to an absolutely terrible, terrible start. But uh, this game was really uneventful, I'm afraid. Not really much happened. But in the 18th minute here, a good chance for us. We played the ball out uh, to, uh, from the uh, halfway line. Kabai finds Ben Arthur. He lets the ball run through his legs. Takes on Marcelo and just about beats him. But uh, Marcelo gives the ball away here. It comes to Ben Arthur, the Frenchman, down the right-hand side. Really good chance here. We swing the ball into Inform Moreno. His volley hits the post. It's eventually cleared away by my opponent after Moreno. Couldn't get a second shot. Eventually, though, the ball falls to Johan Kabai, and he drills the ball into the bottom corner. So, this game did finish 1-1. It was a very uneventful game, I'm afraid, but it did finish 1-1. And uh, after that, I, I said my goodbyes, and I realized I wasn't recording the live commentary. So, I do go and play a third game. This third game is the live uh, game of today's episode. And uh, thanks for watching the video, guys. I really do hope you enjoyed this live game. I'm sorry I messed up a little bit, but hope you, hopefully you enjoyed the live game anyway, and I'll see you for the next episode of my Ultimate Team very soon. Okay guys, so welcome to the live part of episode number 50 of my Ultimate Team. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the two sort of uh, warm-up games, if you will. Um, I'm sure that uh, I would have explained by now the reason why they weren't played live like I originally thought I was playing. But um, if I forgot to explain, then uh, basically for the previous two games, I forgot to have my microphone turned on. So there was me talking for about, I don't know how, many, how long the games were in total, about 40 minutes in total together. And uh, I then realised that the mic wasn't turned on, which is just hilarious. But um, sorry for that. I, um, I was hoping to play those two games live. The first one was brilliant. It really was because obviously we drew 4-4 coming back from 4-1 down. But um, there you go. Um, unfortunately, I messed up and that's not a real surprise. But um, anyway... This is the live part of the episode anyway, and I uh, hope you've been enjoying, uh, been enjoying the episode so far. And um, yeah, let's, let's try and get our first win of the, uh, the episode. I'd imagine this will only be a one sort of game done live, because I originally just planned to do uh, those two games you saw played live and then in the episode. But um, I'd imagine what I'll do is just have those two games as regular games and um, have this one as the live one. But uh, anyway, yeah, this is episode number 50, and um, as I'm not sure whether I would have said by now, but um, I am... Uh, you know, considering having this is the last episode of the series, let's see what team this guy's got first. 84 rated 100 comes to your side. Czech, Cole, Vidic, Company, Zabaleta, Kazola, uh, Young, Jesus Navas, uh, Nazri, Eto, and Jovatic. R.I.P. Doc Landers. Um, <clears throat> where's the weak link? Where's the weak link? Vidic, not the fastest. Uh, both full backs, high attack and work rate, both not the fastest. Yeah, it's still a very hard team to beat. Um, I think I'll probably lose this game, to be honest. Not me and sound too pessimistic, but that's a very good side. But, um, yeah, I'm not sure whether this will be the last um, game of the series, to be honest, because, you know, I, I enjoy this series, but I, I do know there's quite a few of you that aren't enjoying it, and it, it, it's, a, it's a filler series, really, as, um, as, as I've heard uh, as I've heard some people call it before. It's, it's a filler series, you know, and nothing other than that. It's, it's, oh my goodness gracious me, what on earth is that? It's, it's nothing other than just, um, a sort of a stop gap, if you will, for, for, um, when I need to, um, basically just for when I need to put another video up, which, uh, can't be career mode for whatever reason. There's no real sort of plan to it, there's no progression with it, really. Well, there's a little bit of progression as we build better teams, but there's nothing really major to it. Um, so it is just basically filler. <laughs> But other than that, it's uh, it's it's not really the, the best of series. But I, I enjoy it. I just know some people that don't really. But to be honest, like if I was to get rid of this series, I, I would still have to do another Ultimate Team series because in order for my channel to get bigger, I need career mode and Ultimate Team. That's how you um, how you get uh, potential new subs in. You know, you offer them um, basically everything you can. So it would just be another Ultimate Team series. But I haven't really got any ideas for what I could do for a new Ultimate Team series. So I guess that's a comment for you guys if you if you're still watching this video. Um, and you want to help me out, uh, could you leave a comment and tell me what if you have any ideas whatsoever for an Ultimate Team series and let me know because I can't really think of any other Ultimate Team series which could be good for me other than a sort of a generic Road to Glory feel. So yeah, if you could uh, leave a comment and tell me what you'd like to see, um, if we were to do another Ultimate Team series, how you'd like to see it be done, then uh, please do so and um, we'll, uh, we'll get some ideas in. But uh, anyway, um, let's answer some questions for the second time. I can't believe I messed the commentary up. I'm still annoyed about myself. But uh, let's answer the questions. And um, can't be enough. But the first question comes from uh, Andrew Richards. And he says, have you ever thought about doing a Football Manager series? Um, yeah, I have uh, thought about it quite extensively, really. Um, I, I love Football Manager. I really do. 
Um, I, or I should say I love Football Manager. I don't play it anymore because I just don't have the time. Um, I, I said this in my uh, original commentary, which I messed up in. I, um, I, I just don't have the time for it. Football Manager, for those that have played it, takes so much time. It really does. It, it's not like career mode on FIFA. It's really in-depth. It's very, very hard to... Um, I was going to say hard to progress, I guess it is, but it's hard to sort of, um, you know, keep on getting the uh, the games in and uh, to, to basically get through a whole season takes so much longer than it does for, for example, a FIFA 13 career mode would. It's going to go in. Nope, yes. <laughs> oh my god, you would have seen the previous two games. I had no luck whatsoever. And it's happening again. Um, yeah, I, I just don't have the time for it really. And um, I thought about it. I have thought about it quite extensively, but... I just don't have the time. If if I had the time, or if my second channel was big enough that I could uh, make money off of it, then yeah, I would do it. And that's not me being a money whore, it's just because YouTube is the only uh, place I get my money from, and therefore I have to think of it as a financial gain. Um, if I could, if I could uh, partner my second channel and earn um, money from it, then yeah, I would I would uh, probably put it in my second channel. Or if I knew that enough people wanted it in my main channel, then I'd put it on there. But as my channel, my main channel is exclusively FIFA and nothing else, I can't really put it on the main channel. And um, as my second channel isn't big enough, and I'm not a big enough YouTuber in general to make a second channel work, then uh, I, I don't really have any, um, any time or any reason or any possibility of me making it because I just don't have the... Uh, well, I just have the time, and it's not financially viable for me. It's not. A, it's not a good option really to take. I guess is the right answer to that question. I was so desperate to win this game, and I'm fucking one nil down already. And uh, there's a guy on the left. There we go. Quick kick it out to early. I get your head on that one, son. Okay, volley it instead. I'll do. Come on, Moreno. Come on. Come on, Eddie. Keep running. Keep running. Keep running. Keep running. Keep. Uh, there we go. Um, the next question comes from uh, Christian. He says Luke Shaw thoughts. Um, I'm glad he's been called up. I think it's been a long time coming, really. Um, I mean, I know that the English left-back side isn't actually that bad, really, when you consider we got um, Cole, as much as I dislike the guy. Um, even if he's not playing for Chelsea, he's still a very, very decent left-back, very good left-back. Um, Baines, of course, has been fantastic. Um, and, of course, um, Kieran Gibbs as well at Arsenal. I know he has a lot of injury problems, but he's still a very, very capable left-back. Um, so, you know, there, there's a, a lot of good left-back options for England, but I'm glad that Luke Shaw's been called up, because I think he deserved it, really, and um, it has been a long time coming, and I'm, I'm glad that he's got a call up. I know he's very, very young, but I still think he deserves it. You know, if you're good enough, if you're old enough, um, sorry, if you're good enough, you're old enough, is my sort of uh, way of looking at it, and I think Luke Shaw is good enough, so I'm glad he's been called up, and um, it will certainly make his stock rise, um, his, uh, his price rise at Southampton, so I guess the Southampton fans will be very happy if he is to leave uh, next year. So um, I'm glad he's been called up and, um, you know, hopefully he can uh, have a good game. And he, he is the option for the future. He is the option for the future, sure. He really is, you know, because Cole is in his 30s. He's not going to have any more national tournaments, in my opinion. Baines is 29, I think. Um, and then the other two options are, of course, Gibbs and, uh, and Shaw. So Shaw is the future. He is the, uh, the option, really, that England needs to sort of exploit as soon as possible. And um, I'm glad he's been called up. And I really do hope he does make the, uh, this squad for the World Cup. I think he deserves it. And um, if he has a good game uh, during uh, next week, then hopefully uh, he will get a call up to the England squad. And um, that will be really, really good. Um, the next question comes from Sean Watson. And he says, well, I'll get to it in just a moment. Just a moment. Just a moment, because I don't want to concede. There we go. Uh, he says, um, "Do you tell real life people about your? Oh God, do you tell real life people about your YouTube career, or do you try to hide it from friends, friends and family?" Um, I don't really talk to my family, so I, I wouldn't know whether they know or not. But um, I, I'll presume that parts of my family do know. My dad doesn't know. Um, I live with my dad, and um, it's funny. I've been living with my dad for two and a half years, yet he still doesn't know. Uh, sorry, I've been living with my dad for for many years now, like five, no, four years, I'm not sure, but I've been living with my dad for years anyway, I've been doing YouTube for two and a half years and he still doesn't know, but um, I'd imagine that most of my family know probably, because it's quite easy to find things about your family online, find things about them, out about them, and um, I'd imagine they know, but I don't tell them about it, I, I, I just I just don't like it, do you know what I mean, I don't like people knowing stuff about me, I'm a very private person in real life, I don't really talk to anyone about anything, um, In like I said, in, in real life I keep myself to myself and that's it. Um, but I'd imagine that most people do know, it's just, um, 
I don't tell them myself, you know what I mean? So there you go. Um, next question comes from Dan John Moore, and he says, favourite YouTubers besides Elden Nero and favourite TV shows? I don't really watch YouTubers anymore, you know, I just don't have the time for it. I used to watch YouTubers extensively, but I just don't have the time to watch um, loads of YouTubers anymore. The only YouTubers I watch on a regular basis are Chris Smoove, uh, Kazooie, obviously El De Niro, and Rally. I don't have the time to uh, to watch loads of YouTubers anymore like I used to. Um, and of course, you know, the, the, the reason being for that is obviously because I, I, I do YouTube myself and therefore I have to focus on my own channel instead of watching other people's. So I don't really watch YouTube, but I'd, I'd say, like I said, Kazooie and Rally are my, um, uh, Kazooie, Rally and Chris Smoove are the, uh, the three YouTubers I watch on a regular basis, uh, other than Elden Nero. Other than that, I don't really watch anyone, to be honest, um, that much. But um, Kazooie and Rally, just because I, I love their gameplay so much, I, I think they're amazing, and uh, there you go. And favourite TV shows, again, I don't really watch that much TV, I, I, I just don't have the time, <laughs> I just do not have the time for stuff anymore, and... Um, my favourite TV, the only thing I'm watching right now, sort of on a regular basis, is The Walking Dead. Um, other than that, I don't really watch anything um, at all. So I, I just have to say The Walking Dead, I'm afraid. I'm a very boring person, I don't watch too much TV, but uh, there you go. Uh, next question comes from Tom Smith, and he says, Who would you like to see win the Premier League uh, who has a realistic chance this year? Um, I said before, I, I, I've said it all through the season, I can't see Arsenal winning the Premier League, but if they... Okay then. <sighs> if um, I, I just, how do you miss that? How do you miss that? Um, <clears throat> I mean, I know he's probably a centre back, but even so, that is just ridiculous. Look at these stats. Um, but if Arsenal do have a realistic chance in your opinion, then I'd say Arsenal. I just, I don't see Arsenal winning that. I've said all through the season, I can't see them winning it. I don't think they will. But um, if you believe they've got a realistic chance, then I'd like to see Arsenal win it. Because I, I do want to see it. People think I'm biased against Arsenal. I'm not. I really would like to see Arsenal win a trophy this year. And um, I'd love it to be the Premier League. Because it's been so long um, since they have won it. And um, I'd love to see them win it. But I don't see it happening. Um, you know, I, I think there's only two realistic teams, in my opinion. Those are Chelsea and City. I would like to be proved wrong. And I would like to Arsenal to win it. But I, I still think it is either going to be Chelsea or City. And um, obviously I'd like it to be City out of those two, but um, if, if you believe that Arsenal can win the Premier League and you think that's a realistic chance, then I'd say Arsenal, because it would be good to see them win it, they really would. Um, next question comes from SJ Kamal, and he says, uh, apart from football, what's your favourite activity? I don't actually play football anymore, I, I really don't, I, <laughs> a bit of a uh, catchphrase at the moment, but I don't have the time for it. Um, <clears throat> Another say by Petr Cech, what a surprise. Uh, I, just, I don't have the time for football anymore. Um, that's why I don't play it. Um, I do watch it, but I don't, I don't play it anymore. But um, my favourite activity, I'm, I'm very boring. As you guys are finding out in this episode, I'm very boring. And I don't really have too many hobbies. But, um, oh my goodness, oh, thank you, Loris. But um, one thing I do enjoy is, um, is running. I, I really enjoy running. And when I go out late at night um, on a run, I, I really do feel good, you know, because I'm sort of de-stressing myself a little bit and um, that's always a good thing isn't it so I'd, I'd say running is probably my favourite activity it's not really a very entertaining activity I'm afraid but um, I'd, or interesting at all but I'd, I'd say running is my favourite activity because there's, there's nothing better than it being like 2 in the morning it's really nice and cool out and um, there's nobody around whatsoever and you're sort of just you know de-stressing yourself it's, uh, it's, it's probably my favourite activity yeah uh, next question comes from Sean Taylor, and he says, What's the real identity of Elden Nero 90? I'm not buying his story. As far as I'm aware, he is actually Chris Smoove in disguise. So, um, I haven't spoke to L in so long, it's been crazy. Like, I, um, we usually, uh, talk on Skype every, uh, few days, but I haven't spoke to him in, like, three weeks now. It's, it's been really weird. I, we've both been really busy to most, which is why episode, uh, 50, which was supposed to be an episode with him, is uh, just me on my own, because we've both been really busy. Today was the first time I spoke to him about two weeks. I, I said to him, do you want to do a dual commentary tonight? And he said he's, be, he's, he's busy, he's doing some videos himself. So I said, okay, and that's the first time I spoke to him in ages. So, yeah, um, next question comes from uh, Jonas Van something. Jonas Van Holderbeck, and he says, sunset or dawn. I love a good dawn rising. Uh, you know, the sun coming up, it's it's so nice, it really is. And again, when I go running, depending on what my sleep schedule is and my, my sleep pattern is, if I go running in the early morning instead of late at night, I absolutely love getting up whilst the sun's coming up. And as I'm running, the sun's coming up with me. I absolutely love that. So I'd say a, a good dawn is is always uh, very, very nice, especially in the summer. It's, it's a very, very nice temperature out whilst it comes up. <clears throat> And uh, I've had so many chances. Surely this one. Renteria, finally I take the lead. 
Um, <coughs> there we go. <coughs> uh, next question comes from uh, Jamie Creek. He says, when you were a kid, what was your dream job? Um, I don't really know. I think generic was football. All I know was when I was a kid, there were two things I wanted to be. And uh, prepare to laugh and uh, comment some, some form and variation of a homophobic uh, word. But um, when I was a kid, I always wanted to be either a footballer or a princess. So, um, yeah, God only knows why. I think there are two very different different things there. But I always wanted to be one of the two. But, um, yeah, I, I'd just say football was my dream job. Because it, it was always something which... Um, it was something which I always thought was a possibility, you know, even up until the age of about 13. But, uh, yeah, let's just go with footballer because the other one's very embarrassing. I don't know why it's, it's not embarrassing at all, really. It's just it's, I was a kid, so it's, you've got to expect the stupidity, really, of uh, not understanding how the world works. Um, the next question comes from... Oh, actually, I'm going to have, have a good break here because I've got a good chance. Quick, Elliot, keep running, keep running, keep running. There we go. This is actually a really good chance for some skill. Ah, oh, you... Just literally just diving and just hoping for the best there. I really hate it when people do that. And he's doing it again. It's just when you slide and you just hope that it comes off for you. Oh, my goodness. And these guys gonna, he's going to score on a counter. I can just tell. Come on, Simon. There we go. Okay. Um, let's go. Oh, okay. Let me just... Let me, let me, okay, there we go. Let's, <laughs> do you want to calm down for a second? Because I really want to win. Next question comes from Owen Egan. And he says, who do you think will win the Liga? Don't think you spoke about it. Uh, don't think you spoke about it yet. It's a mad season. I actually haven't been watching the Liga. Um, I only ever watched the Copa del Rey like a, an armchair fan. But um, I haven't been watching it. As far as I'm aware, Atletico Madrid are in second. And Barcelona are top of Real Madrid third. Is that right? I, I don't know. Um, I'm probably completely wrong. What on earth are you doing, Ben Arthur? But... Um, all I know is that um, Atletico Madrid are doing unbelievably well this year, and it would be great to see them win it. It really would. Um, and I would like to see them win it, but I still think it will be uh, either Barcelona or Real Madrid, just because their squads are incredible. But um, I'd like to see Atletico Madrid win it, definitely. Um, but I, I think it'll be... I'll say Barcelona, because I said that Real Madrid will win the Champions League, so I'll, I'll say Barcelona will win it. And um, there you go. But yeah, it's um, it, apparently it has been a very, very good season. So it's a shame I, I am only exclusively a watcher of the Premier League and the Championship because uh, apparently it has been a great season for the neutrals as well. And um, it, will, it will be very nice to see a Fleck and win it, but um, we'll see. Um, oh, come on, you little boy. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> that was a very weird comment. I can't believe I just messed that up. I had such a good chance. Come on, Ben Arthur, get there. Oh my god, I, I've had so few opportunities to skill, yet so many chances to score, and I'm only 2-1 up. And you just know this guy is going to score in the 90th minute. It's, it's one of those games when you just know. And here, this could be it. Okay, there we go, that'll do. <laughs> good, good to prove myself wrong. Come on. Come on, Renteria. Moreno, back heel that, and then to the left, Elia's there. Elia's there. Right, going to flick that over the top from Moreno to volley it or half volley it or head it. Okay, that will do. Never mind. Well done. Well done. Good chance. Good chance. Well done. <coughs> um, next question comes from um, uh, Maka HD, and he says, uh, "What got you into YouTube and what motivates you to do it?" Um, what got me into YouTube was uh, to do well to uh, to do it myself was uh, Nepenthes. Really, he was the one. Me and Nep have been friends before YouTube, and he was the one that sort of said you should. Uh, start your YouTube channel and uh, buy all the equipment and so on because he actually said that you know you could make a good success out of it because you know we're, we're both very good gamers together we know that we've been playing video games together for years and um, it could be very very good for us so he was the one really that sort of uh, you know motivated me or sort of was the, the sort of the final sort of nail for me to sort of say yes I will uh, be a YouTuber um, so I'd say in the Penfez sort of has to take most of the credit but I've always been sort of interested in becoming an entertainer of some kind because, as I said before, when I was a kid at school, I was so miserable. And one of the things I really enjoyed doing um, when there was so much I didn't enjoy doing and didn't enjoy about life was coming home from school and watching YouTube videos and getting cheered up. And I always thought it would be lovely to do that for other kids. And um, I'm, I'm glad I'm at a, a, a stage in my life where I can do that, and which is what I am doing with YouTube myself. So, yeah, I guess it was a mixture of seeing the pen fairs and the idea that I could one day... Um, help make kids um, or help make people's uh, days brighter just by uploading videos to YouTube so yeah it was a mix of those two things really um, <clears throat> Mill will win the Champions League or win in the, uh, England win the World Cup that's from Joby Mill will win the Champions League easily I I'd rather Mill win the Championship than England win the World Cup I'd rather Mill will escape relegation than England win the World Cup I really don't care about England um, and there's loads of other questions I'm not going to get to so I do apologise for that um, 
yeah, that's the end of the video, guys. That's episode number 50 done. As I said, if you guys could comment and um, let me know what you would like to see, uh, if I was to start a new Ultimate Team series, please do so. Because um, I don't know, like, I um, I so badly deserve to win that game. I can't believe I only won it 2-1. Um, I don't really know what else I would do if I wasn't uh, doing this series. So um, if you have any ideas for a new Ultimate Team series, then let me know. But I, I probably will carry on with this series because I like it, but... If you do have any ideas for a future Ultimate Team series, let me know in the comments and um, you know maybe we will do something together sometime down the line. But um, that is the end of the episode, guys. That is the end of episode number 50. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, we've won the title, which is great. We're up to Division 3 now. And um, again, if you can leave a comment and let me know uh, if you have any ideas for a new Ultimate Team series, then please do so. But um, thanks for watching regardless. I really hope you have enjoyed the video. I Wow, 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 I just nearly dropped the controller, caught it on my foot. Um, the one thing I'm going to do real quick before I end the episode off is uh, go and see how much Noya costs, because I really do not like Larice. So I'm not sure, I think the last time I checked, Noya was going for about 90k, and um, obviously we don't have that much money at the moment, so <clears throat> let's see. Let's see, or will the game let us see, or is it going to boot us out? This happens so often, it really does. <laughs> and EA still haven't done anything to fix it. Come on, hurry up. <laughs> I just love this game. It's so bad. It is so bad. This game, EA, I know EA get a hard time, but they deserve it. There's no, there's nothing on the transfer market matching your search criteria. Reduce the number of conditions to increase your chances to find a match. There is no man. Oh, okay. It's because it's a silver. Okay, there. Okay, okay. You don't need to comment about me being an idiot. For that one, I hold my hands up. Okay, I was almost embarrassed there, but I managed to pull myself out of it. Oh, okay, I can afford Manuel Neuer. He's going for around 70k. Because um, obviously if I get Neuer, um, he will have a perfect link with Boatang. And obviously he's better than the Reese. But do I want to spend that much money on an 86 rated Neuer? Or... I don't know. That's I don't know why Neuer is so expensive. I mean, he must be good, surely. He must be really good for those stats. He's got incredible stats. Do I want to buy Neuer? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Because I hate Larice. He's so bad on this game. But, like, do I really want to spend that much money? That is, that's all my coins gone if I pick up Neuer. That's all my coins gone. I mean, the one thing I was going to do straight away was buy an, an upgraded Boa Tank. So why don't I do that just to end the episode off? Because I imagine this video will be about half an hour long. So let's uh, let's, let's just buy a Jerome Boa Tang And, um... <clears throat> We'll end the, um, I don't know what I'm doing this, it's obviously who it's got to be. We'll end the uh, the episode off. What what chemistry style does my current one have? Because he's really good. Uh, whoops, squads. Because obviously if I get Boatang, I mean if I get Noya, sorry, he'll have a perfect link with Boatang. Backbone. Okay, so I need to look one that's got a backbone chemistry style. Because yeah, if I, if I buy um, Noya, then obviously I have to keep Boatang. So, um, yeah. I guess, I don't know what I'm saying now, because obviously that's the, um, the thing I'm thinking of doing anyway. Because Boatang is so good in this game, he's really, really good. Let's look for the 83 rated card. These are all the 81 rated cards. Okay, 83, 8.8k. 8 that's not actually too expensive for, a, for an upgraded Boatang. I thought it would be a little bit more than that. 8.8k um, 8 .8 seems to be the cheapest. In fact, why don't I just do the player minimum, so I can just get out the, um, the obvious ones. Which are the 81 rated and min price? There we go. And um, what was it backbone? I think um, backbone or anchor. I can't remember which one it was. I think it was backbone. Okay, let's not use backbone. Might have to buy a chemistry star myself, which I don't like doing because I oh what? What? Surely not. Jesus Christ. How can there note be none with a minimum buy now of 2.6k? There we go, let's just... Oh, okay, I thought I was going to get rid of the old 81s, but it didn't. I'm so bad at Ultimate Team, like I never really know how to navigate myself properly, and uh... Let's answer a question while I'm doing this, actually. Um, uh, next question comes from uh, Matty Jones, and he says, Do you think Liverpool will get a top 4 finish? If so, do you think they can sustain it for years to come? Uh, I they can get a top four finish, yeah. You know, I, I really do admire Brendan Rodgers. He's one of my favourite managers in the game. Um, they can definitely get a top four finish, but um, I I don't 
you know, it all depends on Suarez, man. Like it really does. Like if they can keep keep Suarez fit and and healthy and and happy, then yeah, definitely they can reach the top four. I think out of the clubs that are there at the moment, they've got the best chance. I I said all along, Spurs do not convince me at all. And um, you know, changing the manager during the se- a season is always a surefire way to make things a lot more difficult. Um, how much are you usually going for by the time? Because okay, eight point. Let's put this up to eight point. And hopefully that will do enough. So um, yeah, I really like Brendan Rodgers, but I, I don't really know whether they are going to do it. I, I have this really bad feeling, and I know that some people think I am anti-Liverpool, but I have this really bad feeling that, that they are going to let themselves down come the end of the season and, and collapse a little bit. Because Liverpool's defence is so weak, it's really, really poor. And I'm really worried that, because I would love to see Liverpool in the top four, I really would. To get Liverpool back to a Champions League team would be really good. Um... But I'm really worried that their defence is going to let them down massively. And um, they've been leaking goals for a long, long time. And, you know, I, I, I have this, you know, I, I do have the uh, unfortunate belief that they may well, um, unfortunately, just collapse a little bit come the end of the season, you know. So, uh, right, I need to make sure I give the right, wrong way, wrong way. Uh, this one's the 81 rated. He must be going for quite cheap now, he's not graded one, so let's just put him on 1k. Um, so yeah, I'd like to see Liverpool get into the top four, but I'm not sure. Also, whether they can sustain it or not is going to be a big ask as well. They they have to keep hold of Suarez no matter what, and um, keeping hold of a top four place in this league is going to be so difficult. When you think of the teams this year, um, you know City, Chelsea, and Arsenal as the top three, and then the rest of the teams are all fighting for one place. You know, and they are Liverpool, Everton. Spurs and Manchester United um, I don't see any other teams that realistically could get into the top four those four teams you know United and Spurs um, uh, and Liverpool you know just those three sides in general are all sides that are worthy of being in the top four and for Everton for what Roberto Martinez has done this first season um, has also been incredible and they've still got some very good players there anyway so Everton, you know, could definitely take a claim as an outsider. So there's four teams fighting for one place. And, you know, to be able to sustain a regular pay- place in a top four is so difficult. Um, and, you know, as, as Spurs have found out, obviously. And um, I, I don't know whether they'll be able to do that or not. I, I would hope they could, but um, I, I, don't, I don't really know, to be honest. But, um, right, I've got 68k coins, so I can't afford an lawyer anyway. But I'd imagine that for those that have been asking how the series is going to pan out, if I am going to make any more changes to the team... Um, Boateng is obviously going to be staying here now and I would imagine what I would do is replace Lloris with Neuer because I just cannot stand Lloris I think he's so bad but uh, that does indeed end the episode off guys so um, thanks so much for watching I really hope you have enjoyed the video uh, apologies that the commentary may not have been as good as possible well, that's kind of annoying because there wasn't much I could do about that once I made the mistake and realised I wasn't recording um, I knew I'd already messed up so obviously I couldn't get it back but I hope you've enjoyed the video regardless um, if you have done please leave a like because that's much appreciated and it really does help my channel out uh, don't forget if you could leave a comment and if you have any ideas whatsoever as to what you would like to see um, for another Ultimate Team series if this one is to end after this episode then please do uh, comment in the uh, comment section below thanks for watching uh, thanks for 50 episodes leave a like if you enjoyed the video and I'll see you for the next episode of my Ultimate Team very soon